What's up, what's up? This is Trip. Uh, hope y'all are doing good. We live on Facebook. Uh, I don't know when I know that people are here. Uh, there we go. Um, hey, this is Trip. We're live on Facebook, Facebook Live. Uh, my mixtape, The Waiting Room, comes out tomorrow, uh, which is actually uh, at midnight. So we only got a couple hours until uh, the new mixtape comes out. It's called The Waiting Room. Uh, I'm excited to do this. And one thing I want to do is give you opportunities to ask questions, preview some songs from y'all to see whether or not, uh, to see what y'all think of them as we kind of put them up. Uh, other stuff I want to do, I want to call a couple people in who've worked with me on some of the songs. Uh, so people who've written the songs with me, people who, so we got a writer, we got a producer, and we got a rapper because we wanted to keep this well-rounded with the folks that we have in it. So uh, what I want to do first before I start um, playing any songs or talking generally, give people time to show up a little bit too. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to answer some random questions. So if you got some questions about the mixtape or anything, I'm going to be looking at my feed now and you can ask them and I'll look at them as they come through and answer a few. Let's see. Anything, I'm gonna be oh, looking at my that's feed not what's supposed now. to happen. Shouldn't be hearing it. Um, here we go. I'm going to look through some questions. Somebody said, how many songs do you have on your album? Uh, I have 10 songs on my mixtape. It's a mixtape. If you don't know what it is by now, you must not be a real fan. Uh, comes out at midnight. It's 10 songs on it. Uh, we had more than just 10 songs that we did uh, for the mixtape, but there were 10 that we thought were great that we really wanted on it. Some of them we held on to, and they'll come out. So I think y'all will be excited about that. Somebody said, what's the release date? Uh, you haven't been paying attention so far. December 9th. Two hours from now is the release date. What's my favorite song on it? <laughs> Was that too harsh? Was that too harsh in the first moment? Uh, somebody said, what's your favorite song? Right now, at the moment, my favorite song is uh, a song called I Don't Know. Uh, it's a song where uh, I'm just kind of talking about the difficulties of, of life. That's not one of the ones that I'll be previewing right now, but in that one, I'm just kind of lamenting, complaining about the difficult stuff about life and really crying out to God, like, why, why don't you hear me? Do you hear our call? Do, do you still answer prayers? It's, it's that kind of wrestle. Brian Mathis said, you need to do a follow-up called The Emergency Room. Uh, I'm going to be praying for your joke game, Brian Mathis, that it'll step up a little bit. Um, <laughs> somebody said, what's the concept behind the album? I'll answer this, and then I can start previewing songs. This is kind of a good segue. Um, it's called The Waiting Room, and uh, the reason I ended up calling it The Waiting Room is because so many of the songs were, uh, yeah, just lamenting about the brokenness in our world a lot of the desires that aren't fulfilled fulfilled you know ways i'm waiting on the lord to heal me just different kind of longings and so thought of all of life as a waiting room i had uh, a song on the good life called take me there uh, and it ended by saying it was talking about heaven and it said i can't wait please take me soon till then i'll be praising in the waiting room and uh just thinking of all of thinking of all of life as this waiting room and so whether that's waiting on dreams or that's waiting on a spouse waiting on jesus to come back waiting on justice for a particular situation all of this life is made up of waiting and so i wanted that to be a cohesive theme throughout the entire thing um i'm gonna answer uh a couple more quick questions where can i buy it you can buy it on itunes uh you can buy it digitally wherever you want to uh there's also uh it's streaming everywhere spotify apple music you can get it all those places too um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start previewing some, some songs. I'm going I'm to play the first song on the mixtape. It's called Clouds. It was produced by a good friend of mine named Gavi. I'm not going to tell you what his producer name used to be because he doesn't like to talk about it. But he may or may not join us at some point. But I'm going I'm to play a little bit of this one. It's called Clouds. And I want to hear what y'all think about it. And I'll talk about it a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit about it before I start to play it. Clouds, um, it's a song just kind of about the roller coaster that it comes with being ambitious or having dreams um whenever you're ambitious and you have dreams for stuff you want to do at least for me there's like this roller coaster of man this is an amazing idea i feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to be this is incredible it's going well and then it's kind of the the valley where it's like i suck why am i even trying to do this, this is a terrible idea and 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 that's kind of this up and down of dreams sometimes you're like man i feel like i'm doing what i was made to do other times you, you, you're not really sure so this song is about that kind of journey of of chasing dreams, those moments when you feel amazing, like you way up in the clouds on cloud nine, everything's going great, uh, to those times when you feel like everything's going terrible. This is the first song on a mixtape. It's called Clouds. I'm going to play it right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, this Fowler Dreamers. 
Yes, sir. Woke up in the morning feeling like a million dollars. Allen, can't nobody stab us, no lie. I'm up. I'm dreaming about the way I'm about to conquer all the monsters in my way. I'm feeling like I'm on fire. I love the feeling when you're walking in, you're counting. Ain't no turning back. I'm out and I ain't finished. Just watch. I'm up. Probably ain't no ceiling. Don't be silly. Ain't no ceiling when I'm in. Cause homie, this is my spot. My spot. Way up in the clouds like a am Clouds like a mound. Woke up from asleep and I'm tired. No way you want to get up, I'm leaving my eyes. Like a safe, then I think of my dreams and I'm wide. Awake is like a light and a beacon inside. I made a be honest, that shit was a blur. I had a dream, but it was deferred. I caught a beat and I'm meeting the dirt. Wondering where the dreams were seeking to merge. But that's the way dreams go. They hurt before they heal. If you ain't know, they take before they heal. Casinos, they kill before they live. Casinos, desires to stay far and away. I've seen those fires that's never catching the blaze. I've seen those, but it's something in my soul. They can't stop running at a hundred to the go. Woke up in the morning feeling like a million dollars. Allen, can't nobody stab us, no lie. I'm up, I'm dreaming about the way I'm about to conquer all the monsters in my way. I'm feeling like I'm on fire. I love the feeling when you're walking in your cowling. Ain't no turning back, I'm out and I ain't finished just what I'm up. Ceiling, don't be silly, ain't no stealing when I make Cause homie, this is my spat, my spat hey. Way up in the clouds like a way on Way up in the clouds like a mom All right, that was the first one. Uh, that's the first song on the mixtape called Clouds. And uh, I feel like a radio host right now. That's Clouds by Trip Lee from his new mixtape, The Waiting Room. Um, yeah, I want to know what y'all think about that one. That's uh, the first one. We feel like it was a good one to start the project off. It feels hopeful and, and it's still dealing with those things about waiting for dreams to come true and all that. Uh, little known fact about that one. That was uh, that beat uh, me and Gavi worked on originally for Rise. And that was a song that we really loved. Um, that we ended up leaving off Rise just because we, we wanted the project to fit perfectly. And so we left that one off. And I kind of revisited that song and rewrote a whole new song. We did whole new drums and made it a, a completely new one. And, uh, yeah, that, that's one of my favorite joints on the project. Um, let me see what y'all are saying about it. Um, I got four fire emojis from Colton Rogers. I got, like, nine from Kevin. Nine, nine, nine flame emojis must mean this. It's dope to you. Uh, someone said, it's like you wrote this song. I don't think I get that joke, Nico. It's like you wrote this song. I did write it. You're trying to say I got ghostwriters. I don't have ghostwriters. No Drakeness is happening over here. I, I write all my rhymes, Nico. Uh, nah, I'm just playing. Um, that's Clouds. I do write all my rhymes. I'm playing about that. Hey, um, let's play another one. Y'all may or may not know this one. This is the second one on the mixtape. Produced by Gavin. Black is how but we good Till it's over we bow I know we misunderstood I know they pressing me They want me sweating They leave me but we never could So when that weather be heating up Bitches to see us up under the hood I, I, Ice cold, watch your step I'm about to watch my breath So cold, ain't got no threat Stand firm, I'm folded across my chest So cold, won't settle Winter time, on schedule Way low, got our own level So cold, need a cold metal Leveled up to buy 10 dollars Leveled up to about 20,000. Yeah. Leveled up to about 30,000. They draft us below zero. We ain't moving, we too froze. We can't move, we too.
More fight than it, no pressure. Want my ego below zero when I'm humble, I'm better. Boy, they see it, get stretched. This cold world, come get you. We still flat with no feathers. And they'll pull you down if you live. Get a click fro. I don't mean ice on the wrist, though. Yeah. Then we ain't just hanging. All right, that's uh, Too Cold. Y'all know that one. Uh, I got a friend with me who worked on Too Cold with me, who's here right now. Uh -huh. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh -huh. Gavin. What's Gavin? going on? Gavin, how you doing, bro? Good. Wow, I am blind. I can't even see some of these things. I can't see those either. I'm looking at it on my phone. Oh, you are? Yeah. How you doing, yo? Good, man. How are you? Good. Hey, look. I like this. Yankees all day. I don't even know if you're a real Yankee fan. I'm not a Yankees fan, bro. No? I just like the hat. It is the best logo of all time. I'll give it that. Yes. And do you like it because that's your New York allegiance, even though you Wrong. got an L.A. Lakers. Well, it's a funny story. So it story. can't really be your It's a New good York story, fan. though. It's a good story. All right. Let's so go. everything is New York when it comes to Giants, Yankees. Uh, but for basketball, yeah, I just love the history of the Lakers. Yeah. You're talking about Jerry West. You're talking about Magic Johnson. Talking about Kobe Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the Knicks though? They got history. The Garden. I don't want that's the a, Knicks right now. They they're kind of rebuilding. Porzingis. I've just never Porzingis been a Knicks fan. in the building. I've never been a Knicks fan. All right. Let's talk about music now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> There's probably a bunch of like rivalries going on. And if it, if y'all have any questions for me and Gavi, stuff you want us to talk about, if you're wondering whether or not we're cousins, we are. Uh, Trip is actually Dominican. I'm not actually. Come on, man! Don't lie, yo. We I, all know. Uh, Go ahead, speak Spanish. Go ahead. I can't speak any Spanish, man. But however, I am a one eighth Cherokee, Native American. That's for right. real. That's true. My great grandmother's Cherokee. Is I'm... that funny to you? Did you find that humorous? <laughs> <laughs> people think I'm uh, Hispanic sometimes, though. People roll up on me as speaking Spanish to me. Looking at the screen is interesting. We look a little. You are Dominican, bro. I'm not. I'm just... Maybe you're black. I could. I actually do have African roots in me. Yeah, Dominican. You know? Yeah, yeah. Dominican. Uh, we don't talk about stuff that people want to hear us talk about. Um, <laughs> clouds. Any, any, anything you want to say about clouds? Process of making that that main vocal sample in it. I shouldn't yeah. do that because I don't have auto tune. But that. It, yeah. Where did you get that sample from? No, it wasn't a sample. It was my voice. Uh, I know, I was just setting it up for you to sound oh, thank you, thank really you. good. Yeah, nah, it wasn't a sample, yo. You know what I'm saying? Um, that was during Rise time where I was just, you know, doing a lot of singing things and experimenting on Logic and all these different plugins. Yeah. And then I found a cool way to make myself sound like a chipmunk, but in a cool way. Yeah. So I sang, we are lovers, we are lovers, oh. Just, can we just back up? Sound like a chipmunk in a cool way. That, that yeah. didn't sit with me well. I don't think there's a cool got chipmunks on I like chipmunks. Have you ever heard the Christmas album? You don't like Christmas music. Too. I don't. Christmas music is terrible. We can debate wow. the, the merits of Christmas music. I forgot in a second, you don't though. like Christmas I would love music. to talk to you about that. So on that one, you know, we redid it. What did we change? I'm just saying, you know, back to we, clouds. New drums. New drums. Dirty Rice got on it. Yep. He was able to do some amazing drums. Yep. Put some 808s up in that. Uh, what and else? I rewrote the whole song. You did. You rewrote. All my verses and the hook. Didn't you rewrite that a couple times or just once? No, I rewrote that one once. Once? Yeah. What was the one that you wrote? Oh, Too, too cold. cold. I wrote that one a million times. You did. So that's all Too Cold. We just played that one. Yes. Uh, how you felt about the response to it so far? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait for, like, there was a couple people. I think there was a couple people already doing, like, dance stuff to it. Oh, there's, uh, who is it? Caleb. He did this video where the the mannequin challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too Cold? Yeah. That was nuts. Yeah. I like that. So it's it's awesome seeing people enjoy the music. Yeah. It's awesome always like having us do stuff together. Yeah. It's fun. I'm excited about this project. It's a lot of great music. Even outside of like stuff that I didn't even produce. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. So man. Yeah. What uh who's your favorite reach artist to work with? <laughs> this guy named Gavi. Uh, you, nice. like that that nice. you like that one? That was nice. Like that one? That was nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. Cause I just became a reach Slide artist. Out of that. Yeah. So I like working. Yeah. Yeah, what was your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite EP that came out last year? <laughs> this EP called Lost in Hue, and I think another one called Holding Hue. That That's one dope. was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a dope yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any final words about your work on the waiting room? Oh, we need to talk about uh, Christmas music real quick. <laughs> Look, Christ why, 
Okay. Can I tell you why I think Christmas music is... Let me uh, tell you why it's beautiful. Okay, go ahead. It's timeless. Yes. Not necessarily. Yes, it's timeless. Not necessarily. Yes. You know what's not timeless? In sync, Merry Christmas. You know what? That's not timeless. It is. You know what's not? I like it. You know the other thing. People Mariah real... Carey's Justin Bieber. Okay, there's some unique ones. Come not on. Bieber. You can take Bieber's Under out. The mistletoe. Not Bieber. Come not on. Beeps. Come on, man. Uh, Mariah Carey. Yeah, there, there's some phenomenal album. But most people bring man. this C game for. No, no, they no, don't no. even work hard on the album title. It's just they name Merry Christmas. Listen. They don't even try. It's like Justin Bieber, Merry Christmas. Where I carry Merry Christmas. Wow. <laughs> Just blank wow. Merry Christmas, no effort at all. Have you ever heard Israel uh, Hewen's Christmas album? I actually haven't heard it. Amazing. Yeah. You're sleeping. You're not You're not a good Hollywood Kurt Franklin person. did one that was dope a long time ago. It. You know what it's called? Mm-hmm. Kurt Franklin and the Family Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 he put more time into the music, though. The music was dope. People bring their C game with Christmas music. They don't try. I think as long as they put the little jingle bells in the background in the track, <laughs> people sing the same songs. They don't try, bro. It's their C game. Yo, you have no Christmas spirit. I love Christ. Don't love Christmas music. <laughs> I like Christ though. That's the only thing oh the Bible requires me to love. Um, anything final about waiting room music? Well, let's talk about the other ones you did real quick. We're not gonna play those ones too. Well, we are. Let's play Lord Have Mercy. Is that next? Yeah, I'm gonna play that on next. Swagging. Lord have mercy. Um, that's uh, that one in the first mm-hmm. verse. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what you'll hear. The whole mm-hmm. song is just kind of talking about difficulties in in this life and how messed up and chaotic our world is. And the hook is like a a cry to the Lord for mercy, saying, "Lord have mercy." Y'all. The first verse I'm talking about brokenness within my own heart. Second verse I'm talking about in the world around and all of that. I'll, we'll play the first verse in the hook. Bang bang. Yep. So. Ugh. Born center like big and maybe cold. Ugh. Your picture pitch black, you can peer into my soul. Ain't those rally crying, ain't no penance for my roles. I don't wanna face a sentence, but it's clear I'm getting cold. I try every time I think I'm on the way up. Judge me what lawyer gon' take me out, take me out. I'm a man, I'm a man. And I ain't perfect, but he understands, understands. Hope he do, cause I got bigger plans. Time is money, her days are honey. No, the comments, not, I'm not. <laughs> you came in, you saying this. It made it look crazy. like I was, the song is dope. So what are your thoughts on right. pride? God. Oh my gosh. I love Christmas. <laughs> uh, give people some, some insight in the, that beat. Making yeah, that, that one was really cool. Uh, Ill Mind really inspired me on this mm. track. So I love how he makes his own samples. Um, so on that, I went through a lot of just library sounds through, um, like contact this program called Contact um, that just brings a library of sounds and uh, uh, I can't remember some other stuff, but there's a lot of like Asian influence of like this. Uh, it's not a guitar, but it's a, like a pluck guitar type of thing. Yeah. And I just played the melody and then I sent it through all this like plugins that made it sound rich and warm and as if it was a sample. Yeah. And then I chopped it up, stressed it, made it slow. And then, yeah. What it's people cool. don't get to hear is the switch up on the end that you did where oh, it kind of yeah. breaks down. And there's piano play. And yep. uh, that last verse, I think people won't like that. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for talking about the rain, Man, thank bro. you for having love me you, here, man. man. Yes. Sorry hey. we can't agree on Christmas music, but I love you, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm going to buy... Do you, do you like Christmas trees, at least? Um, like Christmas we have a Christmas tree. Yeah. You don't like them? I'm neutral on Christmas decorations. I don't oh, dislike them. They don't add anything to my life. Though. Wow. I, the thing is, I already have lights in my house, so I can see fine. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. <laughs> hey, love you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Gavi. Um, 
Hey, do we have any of our other, do we have our other special guest here, the one who's a rapper? Is he here yet? Is he coming? He's not coming at all. Hmm. You gonna call him? You want me to call him? I should call him on speakerphone. Nah, I ain't gonna embarrass him like that. I ain't gonna embarrass him. Maybe I will. I'm gonna text him first and see. Because what if he answers the phone and he's like, says something terrible like he hates my mixtape so i ain't gonna just put him on speakerphone uh let me see if i can call him so what i'm gonna do right now though is i'm gonna play the song that me and tadashi did together that's what we're talking about we're talking about tadashi y'all know tadashi uh 116 he's been down since the beginning and um we wanted to do a song that was just kind of talking about kind of where we are with the whole unashamed thing. Um, I think since the beginning it's been Romans 116, we're unashamed of the gospel. That's been our anthem. That's been our chant. That's what we've wanted. Um, everything that we do to be based around. So the song I'm going to play you right now is a song called Still Unashamed. It's featuring Tadashi. I'm going to play you uh, the first verse and the hook and... Uh, I'll look at the comments. If y'all wanted to keep going, and we'll let it go a little bit longer. This one's called Still Unashamed, featuring my man T. Dot. In this game, you can claim anything and they can't say nothing. So hard, so hard. So hard and your bars might blow a couple brains with a button. Pull triggers, pull triggers. Pull triggers, push dope, them figures might double up something. Uh -huh. Can't nobody tell bro nothing. Uh -huh. But talking about the Lord, it's going too far. Y'all funny. Hey, can I get another one? He can up. It be gate jam on five, deep enough. Going hard like the score might even up. But it won't. Too cold, I'm sleeping up. Why be ashamed? We seen enough. Yeah. He was bleeding, no breathing, and beating up. Yeah. Ain't got no reason to leave him. I'm so. He bought my soul. He picked the slice, can't did he even know? Yeah. Celebrations, best win. Yeah. We got grace, we resting. Yeah. Made a groom, we stepped in. Yeah. Now every day's a reception. Yeah. Still gotta serve my God, no lie. Still unashamed. Yeah. On the mic, I might testify. Oh my, still unashamed. Yeah. Yeah, now what we got so high, they try Still unashamed Love what we got here, glad that we got here Now won't die Ain't a click back, sit back Been a long way, just stay Just stay on one six round You know what it is Ain't a click back, sit back Been a long way, just stay Just stay on one six round Still unashamed so I am so yeah. unashamed, unashamed, squad, we still running, man. Running long, unaffected, we still unaffected. I get it like underlay, underlay. No, no, we cannot be quiet. Get a click back, but we not violent. Why the killer sitting on the side silent? But you know your boy known to start a riot. Been a minute since we did it, baby, here we go. Tell the real how it is while we live low. For the crew, nothing new, mission isn't over. In your hood, out of Texas, where we rise low. Rise slow. I'm Dallas at the classic, riding classy tall tees to my knees and the team on that 116. You know how I go, and I'm still working while you still lurking, and I'm still lit, so you can't burn me, man. I'm so determined, yeah, you can't deter me. I'm still here until they close the curtain. Still gotta serve my God, no lie. Still unashamed. Uh -huh. On the mic, I might testify. Oh my, still unashamed. That was uh, still unashamed. Tadashi's not here, even though he was supposed to be. Uh, well, we we asked him to. He wasn't here. I just texted him, and I said, hey, I'm about to call you on speakerphone. He said, what time? I'm still out with my wife. And so all the ways I was judging him in my heart, I felt bad because he was being a good husband. He was doing what he was supposed to do on the date with his wife. But I am about to call Alex Medina, who produced that song, to get some input on how that how he made that track, where he got the sample. And he knows I'm calling him. Yeah. What's up? What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? You on the Facebook Live joint. Oh, snap. I'm sleeping, bro. You ain't sleep. I know what you sound like when you sleep. <laughs> this ain't your hour. You're usually asleep more at like noon, 1 p.m. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> uh, hey, Biz, we can hear everything fine in the 
So we just play Still Unashamed for people. Do you have any uh, anything you want to tell people about the song, your production of it, how you put it together, where you got the sample, all of that? Yeah, yeah. So I was actually working on it for Andy. Uh, we were huh. in the studio working on it. We Interesting. In studio. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if your songs to anybody else ever begin when I was actually working on this for Trip. I don't think that, that happened, so we can leave Andy out of this. Just playing. No, no. I was in the studio. We were, no, no. We were, we were um, working on this project and stuff like that, and um, and I was going through YouTube. You know, like back in the day, we go through crates to look through music and stuff like that. And that's the beauty of the accessibility of music now. You can go to like Spotify and YouTube, yeah. and Just sc- scour the internet for tracks, and so um, I came across that. And from the moment I like, I, I came, I was, I, I, I screamed out loud because I was like, "This is the, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. This is the sample that I've been like looking for like my yeah. whole life almost." Um, and honestly, like, yeah, once I got it, and I'm, like, I, I kept it to myself, and then I was just like, "Yo, let me just." I, like from the moment I heard it, I knew the direction I wanted to take it in. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I knew the like the people that needed to add stuff to it. So Swoop came and added some organs to it and some dope, beautiful roads, and kind of did that breakdown part. Dirty Rice added some stuff and. Um, this other dude named Alias, and um, yeah, we just all put our hands in on on deck and just added whatever we can to the to the track, and yeah. really pleased by um, by it all, and just the statement that it makes, man. Like just especially during the, all the conversation that's been happening about Unashamed and One One Six, yeah. um, I thought it was a beautiful moment um, and timely song to yeah. kind of put out right now. So yeah, yeah, that was one of the things I liked about it too. Is there are people who. Um, yeah, we've been fans for a while and a concern that maybe, you know, we're not unashamed of the gospel anymore or um, which happens a lot when stuff gets bigger. Not even just with us. I was watching this documentary, uh, this Bob Dylan documentary. And when he started playing electric guitar, his fans freaked out because they thought, oh, no, he's changing. He's not who he's always been. And a lot of them, you know, kind of boycotted his music. And and um, I feel like in a lot of the same ways, we've been such a, a small uh, a smaller movement that as things get bigger, we're in new situations, we navigate new situations. There is, you know, a lot of people who, you know, well-meaning, they love the gospel and they they want to see it represented and, and a concern sometimes. So it was yeah. important for me to, to make that statement that, you know. And that, I think even like, even like in marriage as well too, like the, the, my, the love of my wife or the love of our, like our spouses and stuff like that looks different throughout the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, it, it expands, it grows, it changes and stuff. And so it's not ne- necessarily a lesser thing, but a different thing in yeah. a sense where the love still remains and it's still true. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. And we, uh, we get to navigate a lot of situations that we never got to uh, in the past. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, there's even a line in the song where, where I say, uh, um, you know, where we made mistakes, we should take all the blame. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. not to say yeah. there will never be a time when any of us make a mistake or any point where any of us act the shame to the gospel, you know, that we're, we're not perfect. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, we, that, that's still the mantle we stand on. We still want people to know about the gospel. We still want people to know we're unashamed of it. So. Thank you, man, for helping me do the song. I think I think people are gonna love that one. People on the on the comments are loving it, bro. So thank you for your work, man. Love you, bro. And uh, if you love Jesus, you'll move back to Atlanta. All right, bro. Have a good one. <laughs> so All right, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alex just moved to to New York City um, because you know the world has a strong pull and it pulls people away sometimes from faithfulness. Uh, when when you get off phone, people you can say whatever they want. They cannot defend themselves. Hey, what I'm gonna do real quick. Uh, before we play more music, I want to see kind of what y'all are thinking about the music. Answer some questions so y'all can throw questions in the comments. And I'm going to answer them. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, yeah, someone said, tell us about the cover. Uh, I will. I mean, you can see behind behind us the whole kind of mural. And, um, you know, the, the actual cover, you know, kind of stops at where the little kid is to the to the right of me on the on the couch. But... Here's what we were thinking. Uh, Alex Medina was also the art director of Reach Records when we started doing this cover. And, um, yeah, we were talking about what we wanted it to be like, and we were just kind of going back and forth. Some of our ideas weren't really hitting, though I had told him there was this dude, Arturo Torres, who um, who illustrated the rap yearbook uh, that I was telling much people about. It was funny. The illustrations were amazing. And uh, I said, hey, what if we could track that dude down? And he was able to track him down. And as we talked about what we wanted the cover to be like, Alex found, uh, he was in a museum and he saw this 
uh, Norman Rockwell painting of a bunch of guys sitting on the couch. And we thought it was dope because they all looked like they were in kind of different stages, different emotions, different things going on. Um, and so we kind of took that and we wanted to kind of have this couch where a lot of people were sitting uh, people uh, who look like they came from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different ages, and even with different kind of emotions. So, you know, there's the granny in the corner dancing. She looks happy. There's the kid sitting on the couch looking kind of depressed. There's uh, there's this the old man walking. Some people looking stoic, happy. We, we just wanted to do that. And I thought it would paint a good picture of this whole life that's like a waiting room. We may be in different stages, different people, uh, but but the stuff that we have to wait on. And waiting in this life really isn't an option. It's not something we get to decide whether or not we want to do. It's just a part of this life. And uh, yeah, so so the cover I thought um, was a cool way to, to reflect that. And I love the cover. It's one of my favorite covers that we've done and the feedback on it has been dope. Let's answer some more questions. Um, you guys ever think of doing a Man Up remake? Man, we had a, a good time doing Man Up, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the music on there has been a lot of people's favorite music, and so I think we'll do more music all together. I think Man Up, though, that was a, a special season for that one thing, but, you know, there, there'll be a lot more songs like that with us together on them, Lord willing. Um, uh, Tiffany said, the music has been great so far. I love every song you've played. Thank you. Are there any other features on the mixtape? Um, features on the mixtape, we have Tadashi. He's the only rap feature. Um, other than that, we have uh, Taylor Hill on Billion Years, which you've already heard. He's singing that hook. We'll play that one again at the end if you haven't heard it. Uh, there's India Sean, who's on Longer. Um, that's one of the ones you probably won't get to play, but but I think y'all will love that one. Um, what other features do we have? We have Dimitri McDowell. He's on Ready. Um, Dimitri is the same dude who sang on Sweet Victory. Uh, which I know um, has been a song that I've heard so much feedback from y'all on that you that you really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, those are the the features on this record, and um, yeah, I think I think y'all will enjoy those. I didn't want to put a million features on it. Uh, I, I wanted the the features to be carefully chosen for each song, stuff that added to the songs, people that I thought added to to the voice in each record, and so excited about that. Um, what else? Um, let's see. Do you ever think Reach will sign a female artist? I think probably at some point. Um, it hasn't been for Reach, uh, any, any desire not to, to sign a female artist. But as you've noticed, we, Reach hasn't had very many artists at all, uh, in the last 10 years. So since we all started, it was, you know, me, Lecrae, Tadashi, and Sho. The only other people that have ever been added was Derek Minor, who's now running his own label, RMG, Andy, and KB. And so this just haven't been a lot of new artists added at all. Um, so I, I think at some point Reacher will sign a, a female artist. I think it'll just be the right situation at the right time. Um, hey, because I love so much talking to fans, I want to bring the number one fan of all time. So, you know, like Michael Jordan, when people want to talk about great basketball, they'll be like, Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. There's no contest. And other people come along, people are like, I wonder if it's going to be the next Michael Jordan. They're like, is Kobe going to be the next Jordan? Is LeBron going to be the next Jordan? Is anybody going to ever be able to top Jordan? He's the greatest of all time, no question. When it comes to uh, baseball, someone would be like, Babe Ruth, Albert Pujols is the greatest of all time. When it comes to track, you may say Usain Bolt. Swimming, Michael Phelps. When it comes to being a Reach Records fan, the greatest of all time, the GOAT, is Melanie Peeper, also known as one of the Cray fan. Melanie Peeper in the building. <laughs> Melanie. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I didn't remember asking you to bring anybody with you. Who is that? Okay, he's Porter. gone. Porter, he's gone. Porter will join us again. Hey, Melanie, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. good. Did you expect me to bring you in on this? Interview? No, I did not. So you were ready for this? Yes, I'm, okay. I'm always prepared 100% good. of the time. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your Twitter name, One Lecrae Fan. Okay, well, it's no longer one of the crazy things. Did you, but it, it was for a long time, did you know that there were other artists on Reach Records when you made that? Did you think about how they met feel like that? I mean, I didn't know you were going to be so sensitive when I created the account, but, you know. I forgot you're quick on your feet, Melanie. Um, I got to I got I treat you differently than Gavi. I forgot you're quick on your feet. Um, I, I did want to point out, though, that in uh, the book of James, uh, God says, 
that we should not uh, play favorites. favoritism. No favoritism, no partiality. God, my God is not a God of partiality. I sense a spirit of partiality oh, right over gosh. here. We're going to move forward. Uh, Melanie, have you heard any of the music on the waiting room? Um, I mean, I heard the ones that you just played on the live stream, and I've heard two cold and billing years. Oh, you haven't heard the whole thing? No. <laughs> you were an intern in with Hates Hates Records. Me. Oh, you should have asked me. I would have. Well, I would have. I mean, I thought because you were like my pastor and everything, but oh. no, clearly. Oh, wow. You don't so... show favoritism either, so you are true to your beliefs. I hey, really believe can that. Can we mute her mic, please? Thank you. Um, can you can you scoot over a little bit so you're in the, the feet? Thing? Yes. Um. So I'm going to pretend you didn't just come for my life right then. Uh, and she's actually not taller than me. I just sit low. I have a short what? torso. Yeah. She's not taller tall than me. How tall are I you? I am the... For the people? I'm, for the fans? I think you know the fans what? want to know, right? Exact, How tall? I am How tall are you, Hold Trent? on. I am exactly the height that God made me. And uh, he Which made me like this and he loves five me. five feet. And, you know, uh, the Bible says that... Just playing. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do have one question for you. Um, what are you going to do to make sure that everybody grabs my new mixtape? I mean, I feel like since I no longer have the username as one Lecrae fan, it's really hard for me to do my tweet spans and stuff. I can, but yeah. I do want you to know that that is going to require you to donate some money toward the Melanie Peeper Fund, oh. which, I mean, it's just, it comes at a price now. I'm a social influencer, so wow. You know, wow. for me to tweet that much, wow. you know, I can no longer, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, serious question. Because we're two sarcastic individuals, and this could go on for a long time. Yes, this could. Uh, for real, what what made you a big fan of Reach 116, and what keeps you a fan of what we're doing? Like, what, what stuff made you connect with it at a deep level? Because I, I got the impression that it, it hasn't been just you like our songs or you like some of our videos, but there's mm -hmm. something more substantial than that that's drawing you to it. Yeah, I think originally... <clears throat> I think originally it was that, um, like, when I, like, I loved the music and I loved just the energy that it had, and then, like, in my own personal life and in my testimony, I felt like the Lord really used it to speak into that and to speak into, like, different insecurities that I had. Like, when I heard Weight and Glory from KB, like, I remember crying, like, and, and just really uh, feeling the Lord use that in my life, and so... Since that, I've wanted other people to experience that in the same way, and and I've noticed the thing about this music that seems different to me than others is that, like it can it can reach the people who have completely different backgrounds who yeah. like shouldn't really have anything else in common, but the Lord can use the exact same music to speak to them, and so like I want people of all different backgrounds and of all different religions and races and all those things to come together and unite under this music which is what like i love the most and that's why i promote it the way that i do and the way that's that dope. i have over the past few years that's dope so, yeah. that's dope well um thank you for talking thank you for jumping in <laughs> i was <laughs> grateful for you and one of the reasons i'm grateful for melanie and folks like her is because uh from the beginning like we haven't fit in any of the traditional music boxes so um, the way that our music has had to has had to spread is really like word of mouth, whether it's like telling your friend, or posting about it, internet stuff. And I think what Melanie represents is uh, a passionate kind of squad who loves our music and tells people about it because they're passionate about the quality of music and what it talks about. And uh, that's part of our music is spread. We haven't had radio play like that. Uh, our videos don't get played everywhere like that. All the mainstream sites will you know give us some love sometimes, but not all the time. And so fans like Melanie and a lot of y'all watching is part of what helps us to do. It's part of what we said, you, you are the movement, this 116 movement. We, we're not carrying that on our own. So thank you, Melanie, for real. Appreciate you. Um, and now that you leave, okay. yeah, I can talk about you without your, your witty comebacks. Uh, I can feel free to say whatever I, whatever I want, but I won't say bad things because I just express my appreciation. And you brought up the pastor thing, so I, I'm trapped now. Um, Hey, I'm gonna look at some more questions from folks. Um, I do wanna, I do want y'all to tell me so far the songs that I've played. What's your favorite song so far? Um, what's your favorite song so far? Uh, hey, one thing I want to do is I want to call some more people. Uh, and while y'all tell me what's your favorite song so far, I'm gonna call two more people that I love. Hey, can you can you text Lecrae and see what he's doing? So I don't have to do like a long texting. Oh, he's he's out of town. That's right. 
He's busy. Hey, I am going to call another person, though. I don't know if she's going to be ready for this or not. Hello. Hey, wife. What you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm painting and watching you on Facebook Live. Oh, I thought I was shocking you. You watching it? Uh, Yeah, I am watching it. I'm I'm supportive, so, you know. Look at that. Just being a model. It's a good thing you don't cuss, otherwise I wouldn't have called you uh, like this without telling you. Because you would have got me in trouble. Um, Hey, uh... Can you give people a perspective, just as my wife, of uh, how you feel about the music? Um, and then also just what it's like watching the project come together? <laughs> okay. Um, you don't have to give like a long, deep answer. <laughs> no, you don't have to prepare. This is off off the cuff. Okay. Unless you don't um, like the music. You should keep that to yourself. But <laughs> if you do like it and you have any thoughts, unique wife perspective. Um, okay. Well, I love it, obviously. I think it's amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite projects, and for some reason, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm like, more excited about this one coming out than other ones. I think it's because it took forever, and it was actually supposed to take a month. That's true. Um, People don't know about this. Yes, so it was supposed to take one month, which turned into six months. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it feels like it's been a journey. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it's been, yeah, it's been great. I, um, I love it, and I'm excited for everybody to hear it. I've been hearing these songs for a very long time in our house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I write at so. home, and... Uh, the uh, one of the songs on longer is I'm just kind of talking about the tough stuff that comes along with my health, chronic fatigue, asking the Lord to heal me of that stuff. Um, at the end of one of the verses, I say I'm just talking about basically how everybody's mad at me when my body crashes. You know, music folks and book folks and church folks, and and then I say at the end of the verse, uh, my wifey she hurt the pain in her eyes. She trying to be strong and just take it in stride, but it's wearing it down. And I'm asking today. How long will it be till you take it away? Um, any thoughts that will help people understand, you know, kind of the the kind of um, the difficulty that, that my health brings in our life? And, you know, which I guess what you think when you hear that song. You know, I played it for you before we went to mix and master. Make sure you was OK with me saying that. And um, mm-hmm. anything that will help people to grasp that as they listen to that song? Um. Well, it's it's um, it's a hard illness to understand and to uh, live with, both yeah. for you and you know, pretty much anybody that has to um, you know work with you or depend yeah. on you for something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, obviously, I'm the the one that does that the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't remember exactly what I felt when I, uh, or like what I was thinking when I first heard the song. Yeah. But um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's so it encompasses so much of our life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, for those who know us well, they obviously know that. Um, yeah. But uh, it has been, uh, yeah, one of the things that has shaped our lives and. Um, so many different ways from like work, business decisions to, um, you know, why we moved to Atlanta and, yeah, yeah. um, pretty much every crevice of our life it, yeah. it touches because it affects you so much. So, yeah. um, well, it really is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard, but the Lord has, yeah, the Lord has been with us and has been good and faithful. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I sincerely have no idea how I would be doing records, how we'll be raising kids, how we'll be paying bills, how we'll be doing anything if uh, the Lord hadn't given me such a supportive wife. And so I want to say that now on Facebook Live so people understand is they're appreciative, uh, appreciative for songs and grateful for stuff that, um, that while, you know, with that gratitude to God for what he's done through me and the work he's allowed me to do, also through you and the work 
you're allowed to do so. Love you. And uh, thanks, too. Hey, love you too. all the girls, all the young ladies who want to be married, this is the kind of woman you need to be. <laughs> I'm going to get a hug when I get home. Peace. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Um, that was um, not a planted interview. That was my real wife on the phone. We didn't fake that, just in case you were wondering if that was about. Was, no, I didn't have to say that. <laughs> you don't think I had to say that? Okay. He is crazy, man. It's, it's 2016. People fake stuff. Um, I have one more person that I'm going to talk to, but before that, I'm going to take just a couple quick questions, and then Natalie is going to hop in. Um, someone says, show Baraka and Lecrae beef. Show and Lecrae don't have beef. They're friends. We're in a group text together. They were texting each other today. They don't have beef. Um, somebody said, thank you for being vulnerable. You've been an inspiration for me. Thank you for your work since 07. Thank you so much for that, Jason. Um, does your family have a huge influence on your music process? It does. Um, you know, one of the main ways it influences it is um, it shapes kind of who I am as a person, my heart, how I think about the world. <clears throat> my wife has made me a wiser, more godly person. My kids have too. Um, and I play a lot of my music for my wife to get her input on it. Um, she supports me as I work on it. My kids interrupt me as I write it. My son bangs on my door. Um, Usually for no reason at all, but the fact that he's a kid and he loves his dad. and um, So they do have a big influence on it because it's such a huge part of my life. Um, really grateful for them. Um, somebody said, what is chronic fatigue? Chronic fatigue is an um, a illness I have that basically means my body doesn't ever recharge like it's supposed to. So I don't ever feel rested. I don't really get rest. Um, I don't have the kind of stamina of a normal person and my body's... Um, less dependable than a normal person. So where you may say, hey, I see the mark two and there's no problem with you doing that. Uh, sometimes I'll say that and my body will quit on me before that and I can't really predict that and, you know, so it makes stuff difficult. But um, there's no, like, cure for it. Doctors don't understand it that well, but I'm always um, looking for new things to do and trying to navigate it in a way that honors God. Um, let's see. How much is this material is new versus from Rise? Um, all of the songs are new. Uh, there's one song, uh, what there's a one song clouds that we reworked some stuff that we worked on for rise and a song called ready where I written a lot of it. Um, that song for rise, but we reworked that one all together too, but excuse me, all of this is new music. So none of this is just like leftovers. Um, last person that we're going to have talk is Natalie Lauren, who's a songwriter and an artist. One of those people who's strangely good at everything. And uh, she's also, she also a and the record. And we've worked together on a lot of stuff in the past. So even if you don't know um, Natalie's name or you're not familiar with her off the top of your head, you will be familiar with a lot of her work, uh, a lot of the stuff she's, she's helped write. Uh, even songs she's featured and sung on. She's multi-talented. Here she is, Natalie. What's up? Hola, ¿cómo estás? I, the last time we talked, you were speaking English, <laughs> so... You ain't got to act brand new for the feed, trying to be global, uh -oh. which influence. Um, uh, are those glasses prescription? <laughs> uh, yes. Are they? Are they? Yes. Okay, just check. No, no, it was reflecting off your glasses, yeah, so I was saying, just wondering if listen, it was worth it. If it's listen, I got <laughs> you got one hour to your project drops. Uh, thank you for your work on the project. Thank you for letting me work with you. What are some songs we've worked on together that, um, before this? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Fallen. Mm -hmm. Uh, you wrote the the hook on that one. Mm -hmm. We wrote um, that one together, I think. The J. Yeah. Paul sings yeah, Fallen. Yeah. Um, the one about uh, fantasy on a good life. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was and you you sung on that one too. She featured on that one. and sung on that one. One of my favorites. Um, let's think about Rise. Which ones? Um. What's Sweet the, Victory. Sweet Victory. That was hard to try to like. We can't recreate. We can't recreate know. that moment. That was that was a dope one. One of those moments that everything just kind of yeah. came together right. Um, Sweet Victory, both the hook and the the kind of worship part at the end. That yeah, we that, that was in. that was hard to. Yeah, I think we wrote that part on Skype over the phone. Yeah, and we didn't have the beat. Yeah, I feel like we didn't even have a beat. Yeah, but maybe. Or maybe I had... You the, already had the... No, I think you already had the melody, melody. and we talked the words at that yeah. point, I think. Anyway, so we worked on a lot of songs together. Um, 
and you worked with a lot of people on a lot of stuff, folks that they would know. Um, and on this project, you A&R'd, helped me grab tracks and helped oversee everything. Um, how do you feel about the project? I'm excited. I don't yeah. know why I feel nervous because it's about to come yeah, out. I just, I just yeah. feel like... Well, it's, a, it's a weird thing to like work at something over a long period of time, yeah. pour heart and soul into yeah. it. And then it's like... Yeah. I, whether people like it or not, it's like... I. Yeah, I think it's amazing. I mean, I'm a fan of your work. Uh, I, I would dare to say is one of your best projects I think um, man just I think being able to watch you in this process be so diligent um, you know even with your illness but you know it's not easy when you're inviting other people into your yeah, creative yeah. space yeah. so I feel like we you know had a lot of going back and forth yeah. on songs yeah. and it's songs that they haven't even heard yet that I still love like United yeah that yeah. I feel like I they hope will be you release out. at oh, some yes. point. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm excited. I mean, you know, Midnight, it drops everywhere for all y'all. I don't know if Trip already said it, but I did, yeah, uh, Midnight, it. it'll be online. And tomorrow, it'll be everywhere Yeah, online. And I don't know. I, I feel at I'm attached to other people's art anytime yeah. I'm involved. Yeah. So, I'm super yeah. attached. And yeah. It's like, yo, baby. But it's like, I'm kind of like yeah, the auntie. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of yeah, like, yeah. I'm ready for people to hear it. And I think, um, I mean, the way you come in with vision up front, like, I want to do the waiting room. It makes it so much easier to just kind of be able to support your vision and what you feel like, you yeah. know, you want to express with the world. So, yeah, I'm excited and nervous. I yeah. want like yeah. always. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh. Can we talk about Billion Years? Yeah. Uh, which is the second single. Most of you have already heard that. And we'll play it again in a, in a few. But um, you you wrote most of that hook. So this mm -hmm. was unlike some of the songs that we work on together. Unlike some where we've like sat down and we've worked on words together. Yeah. This was one where um, uh, well, we had kind of general concept and, mm -hmm. and the track was being worked on and you kind of ran with and started working on that hook and, yeah. know, and wrote most of that one. Um, and I remember when you sang it for me, like, hey, check this out. That That's the only time I think I've, I've seen you with that level of excitement. And I feel I like think, it was in a moment. Yeah, like a special moment of... Yeah. It, it was definitely a moment because I feel like uh, who was that? Tashane mm -hmm. in the studio yep. at the Old Reach studio. Yep. And uh, we walked in the studio. I walked in the room. I don't know. Maybe it was maybe like five or ten minutes. And I yep. and it's and I I'm not to sound all mystical. Yeah. But I feel like the Lord was just like words and melody, boom, all at once. Yeah. You know, for the most part. And then I don't know. I think I went in. You came in. I was like, yeah. "Yo, the, the, yeah. he gave us one." Yeah. And it's like yeah. when those moments happen. That's rare for me. So yeah. it's like when it happens, it's like I'm grateful for it. And I feel like, you know, it, it's it was the bow on what we already, what you already had brought to the table. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, because you had already kind of talked through the other songs and the, and the entire concept. I feel like it was easy for me to just pull those words from what was already kind of yeah. out there. But yeah. That's a special one for me. Yeah. I, I feel like that was it was a, special a, it was a dope one. moment because yeah. there's some songs where like the first like go at it, it'll be like, oh, I think I see something here. Mm -hmm. But that was one where yeah. as soon yeah. as you sang it, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Now, that's one of yeah, my yeah. favorites. I feel like I I don't know is is yeah. my favorite though. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite I, I feel right like now. that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna yeah. play. I'm gonna play Billion Years, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna let people ask us questions about it. Okay. Yeah.
listen out when I bow. Hold my way home. Don't dwell on the past and let's just go, go. Let's go. My life ain't feel skippy, come feel trippin' if you don't believe it. My life is a war zone, no meal till you nothing's coming easy. I got a lot of bad burns, I got a few set wounds. Bullet holes in my air ones, I be done without that song. Yeah, I lost a few loved ones, I enjoyed a lot of good times. For the journey, but my heart's know that's a good sign. Oh no, won't be stopping my pilgrimage up town. Oh no, I made it way, way too high up to come down. Somebody told me I ain't gotta pack no license stately. Somebody told me ain't no joy that I want that I can't get. Life as we know it will change. I made it there with my gang to be with the lemon was slain. A billion years ahead. This old world will be nothing There's a joy that is coming like the morning Nothing that we live Will compare to this new song Heart united in freedom And it sounds like Yeah, that was special. You know Snap it. Huh? You, you, hey. When you write your verses, yeah. are you competitive? What you Do mean? Do you think, like, I'm going to write the best verse ever? Or, or, like, is there any part of you that's like, when people hear this verse, I want them to think he was snapping? Yeah, because I, uh, not so much on a, like, I just want people to leave thinking I'm the greatest of all time. Yeah, we, we, we know but you're a pastor. Want, we know quiet, you said. But I want, uh, yeah, I want it to be. I want there to be like wow lines. I want there to be wow moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am competitive. I think there's a healthy competitiveness that isn't on some. I want you to lose, but when I see somebody else being great, I want it makes me want to step my game up yeah, too. Yeah. You know, so. that, I think that's that was that's one of the things that I enjoy about working with you is that you you push yourself. And I'm a little competitive, so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think we both, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, like, yeah, let's yeah. go after, you know yeah. what I mean? Of course, the Lord being glorified, but great, great art. Yeah. Uh, communicated clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope stuff, so. Let me see if people got questions before we, uh, well, I'll, get, I'll ask you this one, um, and then I'll let you go. What does it feel like to hear a song, Leo said, what does it feel like to hear a song you made um, and hear it so many times? Like, even, like, what's it like to know that you sat down and wrote something and then like if you go to a concert you hear people singing it or you see a video of people singing it and you see you just see it kind of come to yeah. life and you see people enjoy it i think it depends on the song but songs that are uh what i would say somewhat worshipful or yeah. maybe reverent yeah uh yeah. i get super emotional yeah, yeah. so like once yeah. i like when you send me that video that one time of people seeing sweet victory yeah. tears yeah. Yeah. but like you know hype stuff I don't know, I, I'm hyped, but yeah, yeah, yeah. songs like that, I think once I see people respond to them in a genuine way and yeah. know they're connecting with the same God I'm yeah. connecting to, then it's like yeah. Yeah, yeah. super like... Same thing. You know what when I'm I was, And I sent you that. So I sent I sent a video from Rise Tour, uh, Sweet Victory. That would be the last song. People would sing it all together. And I mm -hmm. sent her a video of that. But because it was like special to me too, yeah. and it would I'd be emotional every night while yeah. we was doing it. And yeah. uh, it's, it's dope to see... Like stuff I sat down and created at my desk or somewhere else, and the Lord yeah. like touched people's hearts yeah, with it. Right. So, it's special. Yeah, it's special. All right, thank you. Thank you, man. We got um, one hour left. No, well, so uh, the mixtape, the waiting room, is live on iTunes uh, right now. So you can go get it right now. A little bit earlier, um, live on iTunes right now and Apple Music. Live on iTunes and Apple Music right now, so you can go. You can hear the entire mixtape, um, and I hope y'all love it. Hope y'all enjoy it. Uh, really excited about it. We we really did work really hard on it, and uh, you know I I've been it's a little nervous like knowing it's out there for everybody to hear it now, but really excited uh, because I, I made this music with y'all in mind. I was thinking about y'all while I was writing these songs, the way I wanted to impact you, the the stuff, the ways I wanted you to be encouraged, the, the way I wanted you to turn up, the way I wanted you to uh, just enjoy the good music. So. Check it out. Live on iTunes and Apple Music right now. Um, I will answer maybe a, a question or two more, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, let me just see if I can catch just a few more. 
Um, uh, it's not on Spotify yet, but it will be very, very soon. Pro- probably at midnight. Probably around midnight, it'll be live on Spotify. It'll be live on Google Play, Tidal. It, it'll be it'll be available everywhere digitally tomorrow. So, uh, wh- whatever kind of platform, streaming service that you use, it'll be there. If you want to buy it on iTunes and uh, in different places digitally, it'll it'll all be available everywhere at midnight. But it's live on iTunes and Apple Music right now. Um, uh, McKenzie, McKenzie asked, uh, will I write a book called The Waiting Room? I'm not planning to write a book. Um, uh, I know uh, my last two records, both Rise and A Good Life, I wrote books and went along with them. Uh, for this one, for this mixtape, The Waiting Room, it's just a standalone mixtape. Uh, I do plan to write some stuff uh, on my site uh, to kind of go into a little bit more of some of the songs. Another thing, though, if you want to uh, talk about the songs uh, on Genius, Genius.com, you can go there and you can... Um, uh, you can look at all the lyrics for all the songs, and if there's something you think is wrong, you can you can add it, you can uh, you can change stuff, you can uh, annotate stuff, what you think the meaning to the songs is, and it's really just like a cool conversation to have around the music. That's on Genius.com, um, and I, and I plan to write some stuff. I plan to annotate stuff on Genius, but I plan to write some stuff on my site too about the meaning behind some of the songs. Um, and one more question. Um, uh, someone said, when are you going to drop the music video for Too Cold? We're working hard on the music video for Too Cold now. We've already shot it. Really excited about it. I saw the uh, pictures maybe that I posted about it on Instagram, Twitter. Um, really excited about the video. I think it's going to be real dope. We just want to make sure that it is uh, as great as it possibly be because we think y'all enjoy it then. So, uh, yeah, Waiting Room, live on iTunes, Apple Music. It'll be everywhere at midnight. I, ho- I really hope y'all enjoy it. Worked hard on this record. And one of my hopes with it is that as we listen to it, we'll be able to grab a hold of that truth that uh, all of life is a waiting room. And, you know, if we're going to make it through this life, if we're going to endure, uh, then it's going to take patience and waiting. Uh, I, I hope for those of us who are going through hard times that the songs about trials and brokenness and pain, uh, that you're able to feel like you can relate to somebody else, somebody else is going through it. But I made Billion Years the last song on the mixtape for a reason, because it's the kind of culmination, our ultimate hope. At the end of the day, even like with me with the illness, my ultimate hope is not just that one day I might be better in this life. My ultimate hope is that in eternity, I'm going to get a brand new body and I'm going to be with the Lamb who was slain forever. That's that's the culmination of all of all I hope. So uh, hope y'all enjoy it, Waiting Room. And uh, yeah, hit me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Peace. We done. All right.